Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to Real Life Fishing and in this episode we're going to make musky bucktails. That's right, I'm going to show you how to do this. So I have made four of these so far in my life and they are so easy to make that I'm already qualified to make a video to show you how to make them. First and foremost, let me start off by saying that for anybody else who's watched any other videos about how to make a musky bucktail and they say, uh, you know, oh, you can do it in four minutes. They're full of crap. Okay. All those videos. Yeah, they're no, they, they've made hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And maybe they can do it in four minutes. I promise you the first time you try and make one, the first bunch of times you try and make one, it's going to take way longer than four minutes. But having said that, let's go through some of the basics in terms of what we've got, what you need, tools, things like that, right? So we'll start off. First thing you need is wire, right? That's what these musky bucktails are made of. Uh, 51 thousandths wire to be precise, uh, 12 inch sections, and you can buy it like this a dozen at a time from Raleigh and Helens. Um, or you can buy a dozen of them like this that already have the end for you on one end and then the other end of course is just straight uh, this is not one of theirs I made this we'll get to that in a few minutes the next piece is you're gonna need uh, you need treble hooks I would recommend a 5 aught for a double eight which is what we're gonna be making today so there's the, the hooks that I'm using VMC 5 aughts you are going to need egg sinkers. So we've got three eighths here, again, for double eights. You're going to need some, uh, these are 716 beads, solid brass beads, uh, nickel finish. Do not use the hollow ones. You're going to need some smaller ones. These are quarter inch, one of those per bait. You're going to need some clevises. These guys are used to attach the blades to the bait, and you're going to need some bait bodies. So I've got some half ounce here, which are a little fatter, but they're the same length as the 3 8 ounce ones I have as well. And then you're going to need split rings. And of course you're going to need blades, so pick out whatever blades you want, get those. Uh, you're going to need some shrink tubing. So this, I really like Raleigh and Helens, I do, but <clears throat> do not get this from Raleigh and Helens. Uh, Raleigh and Helens is only a two to one shrink tube. Uh, you can get three to one shrink tube online. Strongly recommend you do that. Uh, the next thing that you're going to need then, of course, is some Flashaboo. Uh, we've got all kinds of different colors here, tons and tons and tons, tons of it. You can see more sitting there. Lots and lots and lots of it. Um, I bought the majority of that online uh, there was a place doing a bulk discount when you buy so many, so I bought like one of every single color. The reason I bought one of every single color is because I wanted to see what all of them looked like, and also by buying quantity, I got a deal. So you'll need a twist tie, just a used twist tie is fine, it's just for temporary use. You'll see that. Uh, you're gonna need a spool of thread, right? I have my thread in a bobbin, you don't. Need to do that, but I would strongly urge you to. These things are cheap. They're, I don't know, like five bucks or something, maybe. The next thing that uh, you will need if you get a bobbin is you will need a bobbin threader, which looks just like a needle threader, but much longer, right? You slide it through here to pull the thread up through and get that bobbin threaded. Don't have to use these very often, but when you do need to use them, very, very helpful. Again, cheap, few dollars. Some type of bench vise. I've got a just a very small uh, record here. You're gonna want something to cut that wire with. So I use my hook cutters from on the boat. You're gonna need some type of split ring pliers and those uh, CUDA titaniums that I mentioned with the split ring on the end. Those will get the job done just fine. However, I've learned that actually having dedicated Split ring pliers is much 
faster and easier. These are way easier to control and manipulate. You're going to want a pair of scissors, just whatever, to cut the flash of boo and cut the uh, shrink tubing and some other stuff. And then for the skirt attachment, right, where the, uh, see, so this is how the, the skirt goes on the lure. And you can see this one, this is the first one I made. So you can see this one, I used a piece of spring, right, like this. And you'll see some other videos with guys using spring also. Don't do this. Just throw it away. Bad plan. Terrible idea. I don't care if you have the right tools to use it. Don't. It, it, it's too expensive, number one. Uh, number two, it just, it's a pain in the ass. Don't do it. Uh, so that's why the hacksaw is sitting here, though. Because I didn't have the proper tools, and so I was using the hacksaw to cut the spring. And that worked out great for the first two of these until I cut my finger. And you guys probably saw the Band-Aid in previous videos. So the spring, the Allen key that I'm using to hold it, and the hacksaw, all the shit's out of here. So if we're not using a spring then to attach the flashaboo, what are we doing? Right? Well, you can see this is the very first one of these that I ever made. And you can see um, by how well the end of that is twisted and how nice and round it is, right? That, that looks pretty terrible, doesn't it? Um, so I made one more after that same way. And then this one here, this is the third one that I ever made. Look at that. That's beautiful. And the skirt hangs on there way better, right? As compared to this train wreck of a bait over here on the left. I mean, it works, it'll swim, but um, this one on the right is much, much nicer. So I'm gonna teach you how to make this one. So how did I make that skirt so nice? And what is it that I'm using now instead of that piece of spring? And what I'm using are aluminum rivets. That's right, we'll show you how to do this, but you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a bunch of these. Uh, I'm using uh, eighth inch diameter, half inch grip, and you'll see these work perfectly. So let's get started, huh? Um, so you're probably going to go and buy these with one end already made to save yourself some headache, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get ourselves a split ring And we're going to put that split ring on. There you go, like that. Then we're going to grab a hook. And for this one, I am using a little bit larger hook. Uh, this is a Mastad 6 uh, just because I have a few of these laying around, but that's not normally what I use. And the reason why is because this end on here is so large. Um, it's kind of a pain to work with, so uh, don't do this. Get some, get some VMC five aughts or, or some other similar five aught. These six and seven aughts, like I said, this is this is a pretty big pain to work with uh, when it comes to the shrink uh, shrink tubing, but we'll get there. Okay, so we've got our hook attached to the end there, right? So now what we need to do is we need to put a piece of uh, shrink tube on there to make sure that this stands upright, right? Because you want your hook to be like this. So I'm gonna work that on there like so. And then the way that I do this is I just gently clamp one of the hooks in the vise, like so. And then I heat this with a lighter to shrink it. If you've got a uh, heat gun, of course you can use that. That probably is better than using a lighter, but I don't have one and I'm not gonna go and buy one for this project. So I just use a lighter because I do have one of those.
Okay, and then all I do is I clamp this so it hangs vertically while that's cooling. So that ensures that the, uh, the hook is straight. So then while we're waiting for that to cool, the next step is going to be picking out what colors we want to make, right? So I've already got a few colors of Flashaboo out. Right here, I've got some uh, uh, some perch, or some, yeah, some perch, some black, and I think this is called Moonbeam. I apologize if you guys pick up any extra background noise, the furnace just kicked on. But, um, so I think this time uh, we're going to make black and orange. So I'm gonna go with the orange with black bars and some of the black flash blue that I've already got out. And then we're gonna use two orange blades. So let's go ahead and get this open. And you'll see that uh, when you take the flash blue off the card, it's got a zip tie on there. Do not, whatever you do, do not try and just pull out some of this flash boo. It makes a terrible mess. I've tried it. Don't do it. It's bad. They do zip tie this stuff quite tight. Use some scissors. Cut the zip tie off. All right, so now that it should be cooled down. So let's take a look. Yep, stands up just like it should. So we'll set that off to the side. So now we're ready to assemble the skirt for our bait. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of these rivets here. And then I use a block of wood so I don't damage my good table, All right? And we're gonna grab this thing in a pair of pliers, All right? Let's put the pliers right up against the, uh, you know, the shoulder there on that rivet. And then we're just gonna bang it on the table. There you go. Now you can see that the rivet piece has come loose off of the stem. Okay. So now we're going to push back up there. So it's just kind of snug, right? We don't want it to spin, but we don't want to push it all the way back up. And now we're going to put this in the vise to hold it. And if you've got a fly tying vise, you can probably use that, but um, I don't. So. so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our thread and we're going to start wrapping it around this piece of the rivet. And we want to get one layer of thread across the whole rivet. And once you've got a little bit, just take that end piece that you started with and wrap around it like this to hold it down. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and snip that off. And then complete your one layer down the rivet. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If you see a little bit of silver through there, that's fine. Okay, then we're just going to leave that hang there like that, and we're going to go and grab our flashaboo. Alright, so now we've got our flashaboo, and it doesn't take a whole lot. Okay, what you're, what you're looking for is, in total, probably between a third and a quarter of a package to make a double eight. Okay, and the reason for that is that whatever you pick is not only going to be doubled over, but it's actually going to be quadrupled. Right, so we're going to take this this nice long section here. We're going to find the middle of it And we're going to put our twist tie Right in the middle. So there we go. We've got our twist tie in the middle and now we're going to fold it over All right, we're going to fold it so that we've got The ends are just about the same and then we're going to take and we're going to find the middle of that And we're going to put that middle on top of our rivet, okay? And just kind of push it down on the rivet so it goes all the way around it so you don't have any bald spots. 
right? And then just grab your thread and start wrapping. And once you get one or two wraps on there, it'll get significantly easier. You want it to hold that. See, there you go. I only had one wrap on and look at how much easier it got already. Okay, so what you want to do then is toward the head of the rivet, you want to get all the way up to the edge. And what that's going to do, you'll see as I get there, that's going to cause the flash of boot to kind of puff out. And it's going to direct that back down towards the hook end of the bait when we assemble this, which you'll see. But as I get up there, and you want to keep this nice and tight, You can already see it starting to kind of puff out a little bit. And my rivet popped loose. So I need to push that back so it's nice and tight. Okay. And that's fine. Not a problem. So we're right on the head of that rivet there. So now I'm just going to come back down the other way. All right. And then I'm going to whip finish this. You guys can Google for how to whip finish. I'm not very good at it. Uh, there is a tool for doing it, but this makes it hard, so I do it by hand, and I'm not very good, so I'm going to edit that out. We'll be right back. Go and Google whip finish. Okay. So we've completed our whip finish, and we snipped off the excess thread. And so now we're just going to quickly hit that with some super glue. And I've got this fancy bottle of uh, Gorilla Glue here, because it's got a brush. There we go. That's... Yeah, little heavy maybe but it will get the job done so while that is setting up we will move this out of the way and go to the next step so next up on our assembly list here we're going to go back to our lure that started set that down and we're going to put on a sinker and i'm using 3 8 ounce egg sinkers which are fairly standard for double tens and i put them on like so so the next piece of this then is going to be to get our skirt out of the vise. All right. So we're going to take off the twist tie and keep your finger in the middle of this too. All right. So now we've got our finger in the center of this loop here that we've created, right? And now what we're gonna do is we're going to take our scissors And we're going to cut this loop in half. There. Check and make sure that you cut all of it. Sometimes a few sneak through there. That looks pretty good. So now we've got our rivet. And we're going to flip this over. And we're going to pull that rivet out of there. And then we've got our skirt. And so we're just going to find that hole from the rivet, which is right there. And we're going to slide that onto the shaft of our bucktail with the shoulder of the rivet up as such, right? And then that's going to force that to hang down like that. And kind of give you that dual layer skirt right this this skirt is going to be you know you got the inside that'll be down kind of hiding the hook and then just a little bit more fluffier body so then next we need some of the larger beads so we're going to put 
two of these larger beads. Then we're going to put one body. Then we're going to put one more large bead. Then we need two clevis. And remember, these are going to go on like this with the curve facing out. So you want to attach your clevis appropriately. And then we're going to take the bottom of one and put it on, followed by the bottom of the other, then the top of the first one, and then the top of the second one, so that when you put them on there, this is what they look like. Okay? Then you just go ahead and drop those. And then on the top, and then on the top of this, we're going to put one small bead. And there you go. There's your completed lure. All right, so now the only thing that's left to do is bend up the end here so we've got somewhere to attach it to our leader which is of course on the end of our line right so how are we going to do that well as i mentioned this first one that i did i did this with this pair of pliers right so you've got these holes in here you can see right that wire fits in those holes so what i did was i just took the wire and put it in one of those holes like so right and then bent it and then twisted it and uh, you know so on and so forth and then did the same thing to kind of you know get that get the end of that twisted around there to to secure that loop um, well after only doing that two times and seeing that it looked like crap and also you know putting the hurt on my pliers and, and my hands and everything else I bought a tool that makes the ends look like this and so that was the end of this that we started with and so i'll show you guys how to use that tool so the first thing we want to do though is we want to cut off the excess wire here we've got too much wire we don't need this much okay so i'm just gonna cut that about here then we're going to come over here to our tool And there we go beautiful and there's your completed lure like I said it takes longer than four minutes but you can make any color any pattern you want any kind of hooks you want and over the long haul it might save you money depending on how many of them you make uh, you can make some for your friends make a couple dollars doing that maybe but uh, I 
there we go there's your completed lure so I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to make these and if you're not already a subscriber uh, please go ahead and click that subscribe button my goal for these videos is to get one new subscriber per video so if you're not subscribed yet please go ahead and be my one for this video and if you liked it and you learned something from it uh, go ahead and click that like button down there for me as well thanks for watching and we'll see you next time